Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Peter Tahar, uh, Director of Sustainable Carbon Aged Materials for CERTEC. I will be representing, I think, the chemical recycling part. Um, I'll be mostly talking uh, about CERTEC, but as a whole, I think uh, there's a lot to say. Um, I think we've already seen and heard today that you know we're all looking for new opportunities. I know that the chemical recycling so far has not been based on all the data that I've seen throughout the year, it's been a part, a large part of the uptake of, uh, of um, recycled rubber. I think that will probably change in the next couple of years. And I think what we see and what everybody in this room and outside of the room has found out that it is just a very complex technology. It's a very complex business and it just has taken quite a lot of years to mature. And I think we're very close to the end of that. Um, so going into um, CircTech, the company. A uh, couple of highlights. We are headquartered in London. Uh, we currently have uh, two operating facilities, one in Poland, running under the name of Eureka Fuels, and one in Germany. A um, couple of points to highlight. We have a full permanent capacity of 250,000 tons of end-of-life tires um, already right now, and that will be across 24 hectares of industrial land. Uh, most of that will be in our flagship facility in the Netherlands. Um, so what has been a couple of the main objectives? So we started 14 years ago, uh, developed our own uh, technology, our own reactive technology based on a, a fluidized, continuous fluidized system. Um, then in 2014, we pioneered REACH registrations on our uh, liquid process products. We don't produce uh, tire process oil. We make refined liquid products. We'll go a bit into that later on. Um, so also, I, I just wanted to say that the name, just Carbon Black, I think doesn't really cover the full message of, of what chemical recycling is for our businesses. I think it has to be a holistic approach of, of a lot of different products coming out. Uh, then in 2021, um, we pioneered, oh sorry, that was actually 2017, we pioneered ICC EU registration on Prolysis products. Uh, 2021, we acquired the Pyrolux assets, the Pyrolux plant and IP. Uh, and then in uh, 2022, we made an announcement that we have a collaboration with Gorla Carbon. Uh, world's largest carbon black producer, or together with Cabot, uh, for their for the production of their Continua brand, which is a recovered carbon black product uh, that uh, Burla is uh, is selling. Um, we have the permits on our flagship expansion that took us quite a long time, obviously, um, and also last year we pioneered reach registration on recovered carbon black. So we have a reach registration also on Recover Carbon Black. Uh, as of today, we've been here for 14 years and we've invested 70 million. So that shows you a little bit about uh, the scale and the complexity of this industry. And I think I speak for many of our competitors that uh, similar roadmaps show up. Um, so just going a bit through the time scale, uh, obviously lab scale, pilot scale, uh, two reactors, and right now we have our demonstration factory uh, in Poland doing the process project. And as mentioned before, we've integrated the RCB process powder capabilities uh, with our Pyrolux line in Germany. And we are currently working on our uh, scale out and our flagship factory in the Netherlands. Uh, just a quick overview of what our factory in the Netherlands uh, looks like. Um, so as you can see, we do not produce uh, tire pyrolysis oil. We, we refine, purify, and we make circular liquids, circular chemicals, and uh, uh, drop-in fuel, advanced, advanced drop-in fuels. And then obviously the stream of the, of the recovered carbon black, this goes into all sorts of recycling, new tires, rubber goods, plastics, uh, and so forth. Um, so this is from um, our partnership with Burla Carbon, but I mentioned before, Burla Carbon is currently selling this product as sustainable carbonation material under their Continua brand. You will have probably seen it if you've been at any of the rubber conferences. Um, 
And just to show you here, you can see actually on the left side, you see our German facility where uh, we uh, use the Burla, Burla carbon black bags for our, for our products. Um, then on the right side, you get a bit of a screenshot from our Eureka fuels plant in Poland. Um, and again, another overview just of our uh, new up and coming flagship plant. This will be in the chemical cluster of Delsau in the north of the Netherlands. Um, and this is a, a specific region here for where basically with circular economy. Um, then a couple of other important points I think to mention on the chemical recycling is that this factory will actually uh, generate a CO2 emission reduction equivalent to about four and five percent of the annual CO2 emissions of the, of the Dutch chemical industry. So you can see that with this one factory, we actually make quite a big impact on the CO2 uh, reduction uh, um, in, in, in the country. Um, and the investment on this project will be around 200 million euros to complete um, this facility. Thank you so much. I, we were told to keep it short, so there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter, for being short, but especially very informative. Um, I would like to open the floor for any questions. Thank you very much for your presentation, uh, Ricardo from Count. I, you say that in your plant you don't produce tire process, or you produce this advanced chemicals or synthetic food, fuel. If you produce the tire process, what is this advanced chemicals that you're producing in your plant? Uh, we, ha we have re-registered liquid. Products, but we don't really make too many announcements about them right now, but it's basically a purified, purified refined product that we take out of the tire pulse soil. So that's an intermediate, but then we have our own uh, refining technology uh, to produce, produce products that then go into, into special markets. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Okay, then I want to ask you one question, Peter. Oh, yeah, yeah. From the policy perspective point of view, how do you see it? Do you need some support as well? Because we heard from mechanical recycling, a lot of support is needed, but uh, for something yeah. that is, yeah. I, I, think, I think it is important. So as I stated before, earlier on, this is a very long, long track. So a lot of people run out of patience. And what we need from policymakers is to stick with their policies. So what is very unhealthy for an investment climate is policies that are changing because I think from an investor's point of view, as you can see, the investment is, is pretty large and what it requires is a solid return on investment, knowing that policies of the products that come out of our product, but other products as well, that these are not changing. I think that's very crucial. And I think I liked a couple of the presentations in session one where there was also an appeal to say, legislation has to keep up, policies have to keep up with new streams that come online. And I think that is really crucial to think, okay, how can we include these streams? How can we make sure that we are not blocking what we're actually trying to, uh, tr trying to, uh, to do here, which is you know, sustainability and CO2 reduction to a certain degree. I think those are important. I think an appeal to the tire industry that I would have is that we are just as everybody else here in the room, relying on what comes in on our feedstock. We will not be able to change that. And so I think when we look at a cradle to cradle discussion, I think it's really important that not just the tire producer says, well, we are looking at all these materials, but you keep keep changing. Yes, content keeps going up and things. Like that. But ultimately we need to start looking at the starting point and say, how can we make tires more recyclable? So how can you make a tire that actually is already set up so that we, the end users, are maybe able to recycle it to then produce better products that can go back into a tire. I think that part of the, of the circular economy is not always, um, I think, fully acknowledged, and that would help us out quite a lot. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So if there are no further questions, then Peter, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.